Okay, so this is the solution for problem 829 in Nelson Rydell's electric circuit science edition. So in this problem, we have a 60 milliamp current source, and uh, it's not a step response equation. Um, we don't have a switch. It's going to be, um, well, we can use the general equation no matter what. But we have initial conditions of current through the inductor. Right after time, time zero, it's going to be negative 45, negative 45 milliamps. And um, capacitor voltage is 15 volts. We have a resistor of 200 ohms, 200 amphads for the capacitor, uh, capacitance, and 50 millihenries. And we're supposed to find a general, the general equation for the, um, the current through the inductor. So the strategy is, of course, we will need to find alpha and omega naught because comparing alpha with omega naught will tell us what type of response um, this will be. Will it be overdamped, critically damped, or underdamped? And knowing the type of response tells us what step equation we will be using and what coefficient equations we'll be using. Okay, so we can go ahead and get started. First thing we want to do is compute alpha and omega naught for a parallel, this is a parallel RLC circuit. So alpha is going to be 1 over 2RC, which is 2 times 200 um, ohms times 50 millihenries. 50 millihenries. Put that into your calculator and you should get 12,500 radians per second. Omega naught is 1 over root LC. And that is 1 over square root of 50 millihenries times 200 nanofarads. Put that into your calculator. You should come up with 10,000. So we have a case where alpha is greater than omega naught. Therefore, we have an overdamped response. Okay, good. Now we know what equations we need to use. The equations for an overdamped response, the general equation, we're going to work with um, voltage. So we have V, <coughs> because the reason why you could, the general equation will work for I um, if you just use a um, general equation for current, but it ends up being easier just to do it with voltage. So um, V of T, the equation we need, are V of T equal to V final plus A1 prime E to the S1T plus A2 prime to the S to T. The second equation, so that's our general equation. And then we need to find the coefficient. So our coefficient equations are V0 is equal to V final plus A1 prime plus A2 prime and dB dt at zero is equal to A1 prime S1 plus A2 prime S2. Okay? Write that, pause the video and write that down because I don't have space, but we'll come back to that. We're going to find, um, the next thing we're going to do is um, find V final and then S1, S2. Those are the easy ones. Uh, and then, so, in order, I, I like to do the easiest thing first. So, we're going to find V final, which we need. Um, S1, S2, since they appear here. And then the hardest one is DBDT. DBDT. We'll do that last. And once we have that, we'll have enough to solve for our coefficients. And then the coefficients go in there. And then S1, S2, we have a general equation. Okay. So 
V final. What's the final voltage on the capacitor? Well, the capacitor in the DC set steady state is um, an open, right? So, and the inductor in the DC steady state is um, a short. So let's take a look at our circuit when, as time goes to infinity, we have this ideal current source, 60 milliamps, and then our inductor is a short, right? And then we have the capacitor is an open. We have a resistor over here. What's V? What's VC final? What's V final? Well. A wire in parallel with an open is and in parallel with any resistance, no matter how small, electricity will take the path of no resistance, in this case, through the inductor. So what we're going to have is just this, uh, the 60, the ideal source is just going to go through this all the way and it never makes uh, it never makes it over here, so there's no charge there, so therefore B final is zero volts. Get up? Everything is getting bypassed and short. The, the inductor shorts everything out, the rest of the circuit out. So there can be no charge there. Okay. So now that we've established that the final is zero volts, let's find S1 and S2. S1, S1, is negative alpha plus minus root alpha squared minus omega naught squared. They have that in common, so let's just figure that out. Alpha squared minus omega naught squared is root of, um, what did we say was alpha and omega? It's going to be root of, it's a big number. Of 12,500 squared minus 10,000 squared. Put that into your calculator. You should come up with the value 7,500. So S12 is going to be negative alpha, which is negative 12,500. S1 is 12, negative 12,500 plus 7,500, and that is negative 5,000. S2 is negative 12,500 minus 7,500, and that is negative 20,000. So now we have the two values we need. S1 is negative 5,000. S2 is negative 20,000. Okay, so now, getting there, we need to find dvdt to solve for the coefficients of the general equation. Yeah, the co <coughs> to solve for dvdt, we note that I sub C is equal to C dvdt. Therefore, dv dt will be I sub c over c. Current through the capacitor after time zero divided by capacitance. So what is current across the capacitor? Well, to solve that, we will do, okay, we're given information. The current across the inductor is negative 45 milliamps. And, um, and um, initial voltage is is um, 15 volts. So let's do KCL at that node. And right here we have 60 milliamps going into the node, which means negative 60 milliamps. We have a plus a negative 45 milliamps from the inductor. This is I sub L. And we don't know what the current root I sub C is, so we're going to call that plus I sub C. 
and then curve it through I sub R. Well, we're given that initial voltage is 15. Therefore, since um, using Ohm's law, V is equal to I R, then I R would be V over R. So that's 15 divided by 200. And all that is equal to zero. And here I have 60 minus, four, negative 60, negative 60 minus 45 plus 15 divided by 200. Bringing everything over to the other side, 60 milliamps. Okay. Minus by R. Minus by L plus 60 milliamps. Okay. So we have 60 milliamps. 60 milliamps plus 45 milliamps. So this gives me negative 75 milliamps across the resistor. If I bring it onto the other side, bring this over and this over, that's going to be plus 105, 105 milliamps. <clears throat> and that gives us positive 30 milliamps as the um, the initial current through the capacitor. So that, this here is 30 milliamps. Okay, now we have one piece of the DVDT puzzle. DVDT is, um, <laughs> current divided by capacitance. And that's 30 milliamps. Divide that by 200 nanofarads. And the chain, this gives you, put that into your calculator, and that gives you 150 kilovolts per second. Great. So now we know DVDT is 150 kilovolts per second. We have enough information to solve for the coefficients. And the coefficient equations are... A1 prime plus A2 prime is equal to V initial. That's a given to us. They gave us that at the beginning of the problem as to be 15 volts. That's equation number one. Equation number two is negative alpha, or S1, A1. So S1 is negative 5,000, A1. And then S2, A2 minus 20,000. A2, 
prime, that's equal to dBdt, which is 150,000. Solve these sim equations simultaneously, and you will come up with a solution of A1 is equal to 30, and A2 is equal to negative 15. Now we have everything, all the pieces of the puzzle for our general equation. Okay. Let's put park, park the coefficients here. A1 prime is equal to 30. A2 prime is equal to negative 15. So our general equation for voltage then looks like this. Voltage. V, V of T is equal to V initial or V final, which we have already determined to be zero. So zero plus uh, plus uh, a one a one prime e to the s one t um, plus a two prime e to the s two of t, and that gives us thirty e to the s one t s one. S1 is negative 5,000 plus A2 is negative 15 minus 15 E raised to the S2 power, so negative 20,000 T volts. That's our general equation for voltage. But, and I'm going to put it up here. But we're asked to find inductor current. And I, the inductor current is 1 over inductance from t, 0 to t, of V of t V of t dt plus initial conditions I0 IL of 0. Okay. We know this is negative 45, negative 45 milliamps. Now we need to integrate this to um, find the general equation. So 1 over L, inductance is 50 millihenries. You take 1, 1 divided by 1 divided by 0 0.05, 50 millihenries. This is 20. Integrate that jump, 30. 30 e to the negative 5,000 t minus 15 e to the negative 20,000 t. Okay, so let's do that. 20 times, and then of course evaluate it at zero. So evaluate at t, we have 30 e to the negative 5,000 t over negative 5,000 minus 15 e to the negative 20,000 t over negative 20,000. And that is subtracted to e to the 0. That, when you evaluate it at the 0, this goes to 1, this goes to 1, we have 30 minus 15, okay? So that gives us uh, 
105 at the end at the other end point evaluate that like uh, 30 divided by 5,000 plus 15 divided by 20,000 and uh, that gives you point one oh point double oh five two five so Minus 0 0.00525 because that constant, and then that's all minus the initial condition of 45 milliamps. Multiply through by 20, and that gives you um, that gives you 0 0.12 e to the negative 5,000 t. Here you get. Point um, plus yeah, plus negative one twenty. This is uh, e negative, right? A negative thirty divided by negative five thousand gives you negative one point one two. Um, fifteen negative fifteen divided by negative twenty thousand gives you positive uh, positive zero point. 0, 0.015 e to the negative um, 20,000 t and multiply that through by 20 with 00525 by 20 that gives, this should be a plus because a negative times a negative is a positive so plus um, 0 0.105 right minus 45 milliamps. We have this in terms of amps, this in terms of milliamps. So turn this into milliamps and we have negative 120 e to the negative 5,000 t plus 15 e to the negative 20,000 t plus 105 milliamps minus 45 milliamps. Okay? And that simplifies to um, 105 minus 45 is 60. So I L of T is 60. Take care of that. Minus 120. E to the negative 5,000 T plus 15 E to the negative 20,000 T milliamps, and that is the answer to number 29. Okay, I hope that you found that helpful. If you did, please subscribe and give me a like. Thanks.